begin our view in System Center Virtual Machine Manager. Here we have our traditional view of the environment. We'll look at some of the servers that are configured. These are subsequently provisioned up into clouds. Um, so we have a cluster, a Cloud One cluster, for example, that is comprised of six physical servers, and Cloud Two cluster, which is also comprised of, of six physical servers. Um, if we look at any of those given clusters, in this case Cloud One, we can look at some of the storage assets that are provisioned to them, and we can see that there's a set of four cluster shared volumes, the mount points, and the fact that they come from a classification pool called Cloud One SAS pool, and we'll look a little bit into that as well. Um, because this environment has EMC storage assets provisioned to it, we have a number of SMIS providers that allow us to view the VNX and VMAX arrays that are provisioning storage. And in the case of the Cloud One system, we can go to that classification pool and see that we have a number of volumes, four physical volumes, that support the CSVs and they're mapped to those virtual machines. So that's a little bit of the value of having some tight integration. If we look at the virtual machines and services, we can start to look at the clouds. Now, clouds are provisioned out for, and other resource pools that users would be able to consume resources from. So in this case, Cloud One is actually using Cloud One servers and we can manage capacity that a cloud can consume from the physical resources. In this case, we've set some upper limits. So 100 virtual CPUs, 500 gigabytes of memory, uh, 10 terabytes of storage, and 100 virtual machines. So as people consume them, they're limited to that particular scope. Within those clouds, and then we can look at the virtual machines that are currently provisioned, and there are a number of virtual machines. Most of them uh, exist in Cloud 2 uh, on physical cluster nodes they happen to be on. There's always been the concept of tenants within Virtual Machine Manager, and in this instance, we can look at the owners of the various virtual machines. These owners happen to be tenants within Windows Azure Pack. So, we're switching now to a client system that is going to connect to Windows Azure Pack. And we'll start with the administrator view. So we're logging in as an administrator who is going to define the environment and then provision out services to users within the environment. So we're specifically looking at virtual machine clouds. The first thing that needs to happen is that we need to provide the integration points. Um, so there has to be a service provider foundation connection point as well as a management point for automation within the virtual machines and there's a, a third piece which is for usage and these are all serviced up as extensions to orchestrator um, the guidance in the deployment actually tells you how to configure this as a result what we end up seeing once we've configured those connection points is connections into the clouds. So this is now looking at the infrastructure within the virtual machine manager environment. So we'll see the limits that we've imposed, 100 cores, 500 gigabytes of memory, 10 terabytes of space. The virtual machines are also then viewable. We are an administrator, so we can look at all of the virtual machines that users have provisioned as infrastructure as a service in this case. So a list of these virtual machines is presented to us. These happen to map directly to the view that we saw in Virtual Machine Manager. The way that we allow people to consume these services is to provision plans. And we'll look at Cloud One VMs as a plan. And this plan is then something that users can subscribe to. So this is using services, the virtual machine clouds, so we can define which virtual machine manager and which cloud within that infrastructure we're able to consume resources from. We do have the ability to further refine the limits. So a plan can consume some of the resources that 
Windows Azure Pack has. And so we're going to limit the virtual machines to 50 and the number of cores to 50. So half of that service provided to us within VMM. You could create multiple plans and so you can then segregate how much consumption can come from any given environment. Users subscribe to plans and in this particular case we'll look at HD user who is consuming services from that cloud plan that we were we were talking about so cloud one VMs and so at the moment this user doesn't have any resources that are consumed out of that environment we're switching now this is the tenant portal so this is the user experience the user has to first register for it the registration has happened in this instance and the user is going to log in and what we'll end up seeing is their view into the Windows Azure pack. So the view for the user is further refined down to those service offerings or plans that they've subscribed to. In this case this user just has one subscription it's about virtual machines. So they can go in and create virtual machine assets, in this case a role service providers or IT infrastructure managers are able to define role configurations and offer them as services in this case a Hadoop service from that uses EMC assets the user has to fill in some information this is about the role there's some version information and now within the VM role we can define what that virtual machine will look like in this case it's a medium configuration, it's a Linux environment so we provide a root password, we have to provide a subsequent confirmation. Um, a VM role can scale so it can have multiple instances of a virtual machine and so the name pattern allows us to define what the names of those systems will look at. Again, we get further information, so um, time zone information, in this case it's going to be based on Pacific time zone. And these, the initial instant counts, refer to how many virtual machines will be provisioned within this role. So we're saying five as an initial count, a minimum of three, and a maximum of 25. So the user can, we'll see this later, resize how many virtual machines are provisioning this service. Um, of course the application itself must be able to support a scale-out services model. So once that has been submitted what we'll end up seeing is a list of the virtual machines that get created in that environment. Behind the scenes we flip back to Virtual Machine Manager. What happened as a result of that user create submitting a VM role request? Virtual Machine Manager started a job to build the virtual machines and so the user submitted a request for five virtual machines. If we look on Cloud One, here are those five virtual machines being deployed into that physical infrastructure. HD user at customer.com was responsible for them and now will get provision. We flip back, this is the user environment again. The user process has been submitted and so now the user has the capability to look at that environment. This is a scale out VM role. So here are the instances that we created as the user we're able to look at the availability of that system, how many resources the system is using and we can do things like connect to the console. This is going to use the remote desktop gateway service that can be provisioned in the infrastructure because the user doesn't know where these virtual machines are deployed. They're somewhere in the cloud but there's an abstraction away from it. And in this case it's a Linux environment. So we're looking at the user experience, they're just connecting into that infrastructure because they want to connect to the physical server. Happens to be Linux, 
we don't necessarily this is a connection to the console of the virtual machine running on a system somewhere in cloud one the name is actually in the banner but um, for, for the most part there's an abstraction the user doesn't necessarily know they just have access to the virtual machine and so this is infrastructure as a service where the user doesn't necessarily know about the physical constraints within the environment. We talked about scale. So at the moment, the process is continuing to, to deploy these virtual machines and ultimately we'll see the ability to scale that. Now we were looking at the VM scale out role, but you can still continue to create virtual machines as people typically uh, think of them. So in this case, we'll go to a standalone virtual machine. In the environment, it's actually going to create a highly available system. We see virtual machine gallery items. These reflect entities that exist within System Center Virtual Machine Manager as well. So in this case, a Windows 2012 R2 RTM version, the typical sorts of information we're, we're going to deploy a virtual machine out into the infrastructure. So what is the administrator password? What network does it connect to? Those sorts of environmental entities need to be provisioned. And then again, System Center Virtual Machine Manager will go off and create that virtual machine for us and we'll get a standalone highly available VM. So we come back to our end user interface. Uh, some time has passed and the Hadoop environment and all the instances have been deployed into that environment. We can see the green area shows us our, our current utilization for this role. And for any one of those instances within the role, we can look at memory consumption, network activity, storage activity, uh, a range of services that we're probably interested in. But because this is a role, we can also scale it. And so we might select the fact that we now want 10 instances. Now, Hadoop inherently has some capability to scale out. Not all applications have scale out capabilities. So the use of VM roles really is dependent on the service that's in the virtual machines. For most instances, we'll continue to see people deploying traditional standalone highly available virtual machines. In this case, after the changes have been reflected in the environment, System Center Virtual Machine Manager goes out and adds additional nodes to the VM role, we get our scale out environment. Within the administrator portal, then we can also look at the utilization on a per user basis. This is that particular HD user and we can get an overview of all of the consumption of resources within their subscriptions, in this case just the virtual machine cloud. Plus within the admin portal we have the capability to do um, chargeback. So we can get a lot of information about utilization and consumption rates. There is extensibility within the Windows Azure pack to do chargeback. And this is the view for the default free version of uh, Cloud Cruiser that comes with the environment. Now, to be fair, in this environment, we've only scratched the surface of some of the services that are available within Windows Azure pack. And in future episodes, we'll start to look at some of those other services like website clouds, SQL Server instances, and MySQL, and the value proposition that those environments provide to a user doing an as-a-service deployment. Thank you for your time, and we'll hope to see you next time.